and one. Hey there, this is Dan. <laughs> hey there, this is Dan. You're watching the. <laughs> Three, two, and one. Hey there, this is Dan. You're watching the Salty Sea, and Merry Christmas from me to you. Warcry is such a great game, and I hope that if you're deciding after Christmas, after getting your presents, that you're willing to spend. Maybe you got some Christmas money. Maybe you uh, feel like you got so many presents for other people, you want to spend some Christmas money on yourself. I wanted to do a little video. I've been meaning to get into the topics of Timmy, Johnny, and Spike for quite some time now on this channel. It's pretty well requ requested as well. So uh, I figured I'd combine these two into one video. And we're just going to have a bunch of fun here and talk about some different types of players and the best ways for those players to spend their Christmas money this year on Warcry. Because, of course, the best game to spend your money on is, of course, Warcry. Let's get into Timmy, Tammy, I uh, have a few friends who play Magic who are, at this point, have gotten very good and very jaded at Magic, but they are still Timmy's at heart. So I call them Timothy's and Tamara's because Timmy and Tammy, they play to experience something. And there is something sort of beautiful and naive about that, something a little bit poetic. But what you want to experience is really dependent on the player. I mean, I think the, the stereotypical Timmy is power Timmy. They love big, powerful, smashy effects, but we get way too reductive about it, I think, because there's so many other sorts of Timmy impulses, and these have all been kind of described by the magic designers as well. Um, there's social Tammy, who loves just hanging out. There's diversity Timmy, who loves all of the different possible experiences within the game. There's Adrenaline Timmy, which loves like swingy, wild effects, sort of random numbers all over the place. Then you have Griefer T Timmy, who is really just looking for like the feeling of having power over the opponent. It's it's kind of twisted, but like if you've ever played a game where you're losing and you have no way to win and your opponent is just like having a great time with that, your opponent is griefy, grief, <laughs> griefer Timmy. Uh, very few people will admit to themselves that they are this person. Uh, win Tammy just likes winning. That's it. That's all you need to know. They just like winning. Let's get into it. Power Timmy. I'm thinking all in skew, right? You're not worried that monsters suck to play against because you're the one playing the monster. Now, that's only if you're really all in about being Power Timmy. Otherwise, you're going to want sort of multiple titans in your list, or it's sort of the other thing of like the Timmy feeling of having a 28 days later swarm of zombies coming at you, something like that. But two factions that I think are going to serve most power Timmies really well, and again, this is the stereotypical power Timmy, is Ogre Maw Tribes and Skaven. To start, Ogre Maw Tribes a tyrant, you can get a tyrant and a gut lord into one list with gluttons, brugit, bogolai to, you know, supercharge your big guys, stop your opponent's big guys, because power Timmy doesn't want to see other people's power things go off. Um, and then three noblars. Another option is triple storm fiend Skaven. You can get a storm fiend with the doom flare, one with the grinder fists, and then another one with the warp fire cannons, and that's just one set of storm fiends and you don't even have to do any conversions for that and then you just play a gray seer and a storm version storm vermin now that all comes in the vanguard skaven box uh all you have to do is convert one of your little clan rats that comes in there just put some extra little armor bits on them and then boom they're a storm vermin and you've got this list and it's great and then of course you know the Vanguard Skaven box comes with a whole bunch of stuff so that in future editions, you'll still be able to play Skaven if they ever, you know, help out some of the cheaper stuff. Like Clan Rats right now are really bad, but if those ever come down in points, you can be like, hey, I went from all Storm Fiends to just like Swarm of Rats. And that's kind of like the other thing that Power Timmy likes is these sort of giant hordes. 
basically just the all-in SKU. And uh, that Vanguard Skaven box is a great purchase if you're going to do that. But Ogre Maw Tribes also lets you do this as well, so I wanted to shout them out. Next is going to be Social Timmy and Social Tammy. The best thing, so Social Timmy is the one who really cares that everyone at the table is having a great time. And the what's actually going on on the board is almost secondary to them. Now, they still want to try to win because everyone likes winning sometimes, right? But they want to have plenty of time to chat with their opponents. They don't want to necessarily have to spend too much time thinking about, you know, what their options are. And so a really good faction for being able to do this is Stormcast Eternals because you don't have a lot of fighters. But the important thing, no one gets blown off the board right away when someone's playing Stormcast. No Stormcast faction is just like all in by the end of turn one, you know who's going to win because, you know, I've thrown everything I've got at you. That never happens with Stormcast. So I think that the Dominion Stormcast Eternals half, you can get it on eBay for only $65 right now. I think that's the perfect purchase for Social Timmy. They don't want to have to spend too much time painting all their stuff because they have friends to hang out with, right? Um, and then while they're playing, you know, only seven fighters here. Some of the fighters, like Annihilators with Shield, there's not a lot of thinking you could do with those. They only move three inches, right? So you can really, like, focus on hanging out with your opponent, you know, chatting them up. You can just, like, make sure that your games go quickly. I think this is a great place to be for Social Timmy, Social Tammy, um, just getting into Stormcast Thunderstrike. It's it's going to be really fun and really easy to put together. You're going to have a great time playing with this. Now we get into the Slaneshi Timmies. And the first is Diversity Timmy. Diversity Timmy wants to feel every single feeling there is to feel in the game. And for that, you're going to want either a faction that you can ally into anything or a faction that you can ally anything into. So Quester Soulsworn and Spire Tyrants are two like perfect emblems of this where Spire Tyrants, you have sort of the Netter and the um, Bestigore who kind of has some interesting uh, combo potential with a lot of different things. And so they really make the best soup faction in Chaos. And then of course the Quester Soulsworn are terrible on their own but they ally into anything in order, and each single one of them allies into anything in order, which is so cool. Uh, now, I'm not giving sort of a, a budget option for Diversity Timmy because being a Diversity Timmy is an expensive road. <laughs> um, I am a Diversity Johnny, and I can tell you that it you're never satisfied. You've never gotten enough things because there's always something else you could experience, and that can be a little tough. Um, one other thing, uh, well, let's get into Adrenaline, Adrenaline Tammy first. Um, Adrenaline Tammy, or Timmy, wants the wild, crazy, swingy abilities. You know, madcap destruction and rip it out. These, this is the perfect, the list I'm about to give you is the perfect Adrenaline Timmy list. Um, but abilities where, like, anything could happen, but... If the really good thing happens, you want it to be crazy powerful. You want to, like, if I pull this off twice in a game, I win that game no matter how good you are and no matter how good your list is. If I pull it once, if I pull it off once and I play great, then I have a chance too. Um, things like that. And if you play Cruel Boys Monster Killers, they are so emblematic of this because of, like I said, Rip It Out. The Neck Slicer with Bone Saw also has an ability like this. The Egg Grots, you react. You only have a 1 in 3 chance of the reaction not just being a complete waste of time. But if it's good, it's really good. Um, so, like, it's the perfect it's the perfect faction for these Adrenaline Junkies. Um, so going with Monster Killers with Gloom Spike gets allies, I think it's perfect. You can get the Monster Killer box for 60 bucks, sometimes less. Um, and then you're probably going to want to go with proxies for the other two just because you don't want to get a whole $60 set of bounders when you only want one of them 
probably don't want to get the whole Gabapalooza box when you only want one of them. But luckily, Highland Minis exists, um, and they've got a lot of good Gloom Spike Gits proxies, specifically Goblins and Dwarves. They have a lot of very good proxies for it, and so that can be something that can help you out there and let you get this for really cheap because maybe $15, $20 in proxies plus the 60 for the box, you can build all this for less than $90 and just go absolutely crazy rolling dice with Monster Killers. A purchase that can be pretty good for both Diversity Timmy and Adrenaline Timmy is the Hargax's Pit Beasts. You can still get it for about $90 on eBay. And this is the one with all of the big Chaos allies that are really sort of crazy. I mean, Adrenaline Timmy loves a three, three dice profile, but you do a ton of damage because you have four eight on the damage side. Adrenaline Timmy loves that. Diversity Timmy loves it because specifically all three of these like make any one box chaos faction playable, which is amazing because that's exactly what Diversity Timmy is looking for. If you can buy, purchase one thing that makes each and every one of your other purchases usable in game you're so happy about it so that would be a great box if you think you're maybe a little bit halfway in between these two now let's get into the scary timmies and we got to take a sip of tea before we get into them because grief or timmy pre <laughs> Oof. uh so grief or timmy is the one where you, you kind of love when your opponent's not having a good time it's okay to admit it. We're in a Christmas video. You can admit it. When you kind of love when your opponent's having a bad time, when you are beating them in a way that is making them maybe want to cry, uh, and that kind of makes you happy, that's Grief for Timmy. It's okay to be Grief for Timmy. Just, like, you just need to know what the lines are. And I've built a list that I think is perfect for Grief for Timmy here. You start with a Warden with Trailhound. Then you have an Endrin Master. Then you have an Annihilator Prime with Shield. Now the Endrin Master is uh, one of the really good melee Karadrin Overlords fighters, but they also have Fight for Profit. Then the Annihilator Prime with Shield is just a really tough to remove, toughness seven, it's absurd, um, fighter. Then you have the Arbalester, a Trailblazer with twin crossbows and five dogs. This can piss off anybody. It's amazing. The dogs get to go minus one action on people. So their thing that they love, just like ask them what their favorite fighter is in their warband. And you can make it so every single round their favorite fighter can only do half of the things. It's hilarious. Um, the Arbalester can blow people up at range, especially in combination with the Endrin Master, where Fight for Profit works for range. I mean, the classic Karadrin Overlords thing, um, but the Arbalester, if anything, does it even better and even scarier than KO do it. Um, if your opponent is slow, your Endrin Master plus Arbalester will just like blow them off the board before they've even managed to play the game they will hate you um the annihilator prime with shield if your opponent is super proud of one of their sweet damage dealers you can shove the annihilator prime into their face and they won't be able to do anything and they'll just be like what is going on i can't fight anything um you know it's functionally immortal uh in a lot of games um, there's just so much you can do here to frustrate people. Uh, having the Trailblazer with Twin Crossbows is specifically there to troll Canine Shadowstalkers lovers because it's just a better version of their best fighter, which is hilarious. Um, but it's also a very NPE fighter just in that it's like very fancy and ranged, and um, I think a lot of people will hate it. So also Kill, if they are a very high-toughness warband, their whole thing is like, hey, you can't deal a ton of damage to me, and that's how I'm going to get through. You have to get lucky to beat me. All of a sudden, you swarm one thing with dogs. You have plenty of you have plenty of activations, so you can kind of wait them out and then swarm them with dogs. And then your warden with Trailhound can just do kill, and the ability damage doesn't care about toughness, and you just like rip through their armor. It's amazing. There's so many things you can do here to just troll people and make people so upset. And it's a very reasonable warband. Also, 
10 models. Some people just hate playing swarms in general. This isn't a pure swarm, but it's got a lot of fighters. Now let's get on to Wind Tammy. Wind Tammy, they don't care about proving anything. I mean, there's a difference between... So a lot of people think that people who play to win are spikes. Almost everyone wants to win. Now, um, whether you are hardcore about winning in-game is sort of a different personality test, not why you play, which is Timmy Johnny Spike. Um, but Win Timmy and Win Tammy, they just like winning. That's why they play, is that winning is fun. Um, and they don't care if you think they're good. A lot of Win Timmies and Win Tammies do get pretty good at the game, but only like by accident because they've been playing a lot and you know maybe they practiced a little because they didn't like losing, so they just like tried harder to win. Um, but they don't care if you think they're good. So the, these are the people who, if you've played Magic the Gathering, they play Dredge. They're just like, I'm going to win game one. Did you draw your sideboard cards that instantly beat me? No? Okay. I'm going to win game two, too, and then I win. Sorry, man. Um, and it's just like the game's over in two seconds. Either you beat them or you didn't, right? And this is a great place to run Chimera Nurgle if you're this kind of person. You don't care if people respect your skill, right? You just, winning is fun. And I respect this. Also, people need to run Chimera Nurgle more often so that GW knows how much they screwed up. Um, so a Chimera, a Sloppity Bile Piper, a Nurglings, and then five Plague Bearers. Um, it's a really ridiculous list to play against. There are things that can beat it. It's not invincible, but the absurd degree to which this list destroys not just casual lists, but like semi-competitive lists or competitive lists that aren't specifically thinking about chimeras is just insane. And so the ability to know at the beginning of round two that you've won the game it's everything Win Timmy is thinking about, everything Win Timmy wants to feel. Um, so just go for it. Don't let people shame you out of playing this if this is the kind of thing you're into. Um, because, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, if we're all joining a tournament and you're playing to win, hey, you know, this is the thing that wins a lot. Um, so go for it. Um, let's. <laughs> Let's get into, if you're into this kind of content, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, Algorithmo, the chaos god of YouTube, and Patreon. These are the two chaos gods of content. They are very punishing to people who, like me, I've made a terrible habit of never mentioning my Patreon in my videos and also never mentioning that people should hit the like button. Um, a few people have pointed this out to me, and I continue to be extremely lazy about it. That ends now. I am doing it. I am reminding people that this um, does change, you know, especially there's only a few war cry content creators on the entire internet um there's like six of us total i think four who do primarily war cry content and then two more who do it sometimes like it is a very small community and liking every video of every war cry content creator that you enjoy is probably the number one thing you could do to make more people see Warcry content in general, more people think about Warcry and grow the community. It sounds so weird, but like the number one thing you can do to grow the community is like play with your friends and be nice to people while you play against them. That is the number one thing. But the number two thing, it sounds so weird, but the number two thing is probably liking all the videos of all the Warcry content creators because that allows YouTube to push out their videos. And so now it's like, like when you watch some painting videos. YouTube gives you more painting videos and then they also give you Warhammer 40k strategy stuff because you are liking painting videos. A lot of people who like Warcry or Warhammer 40k strategy are also watching painting videos so YouTube gloms them together. Then you maybe stop clicking on that but start clicking on AOS stuff. Now it starts to sort of associate those two things. If you click the likes on the Warcry stuff, it 
it does a lot to kind of bring it into the general ecosystem. So I just wanted to put that out there uh, just so that people maybe think about it for a second. And uh, now we can skip to talking about Johnny and Jenny because this is me. I love this. Um, Johnny and Jenny play to express something. Um, whereas Timmy wants to feel something, Johnny wants to get something out. So four of the really common subtypes of Johnny and Jenny are Combo Jenny, who loves the interactions between different game pieces, Offbeat Designer Johnny, who just wants to try to find answers to weird challenges. Then there's List Artist Jenny, thinking of like your list as your art, going all in on a theme, stuff like that. And then there's Uber Johnny, who just wants to do the undoable. It's a little bit like Offbeat Designer Johnny, but where Offbeat Designer Johnny might be like, what's this weird challenge? Let me try it. What's this weird challenge? Let me try it. Uber Johnny is like specifically, what is the one challenge that no one thinks can be done? So slightly different approaches or focuses in the same sort of idea. Let's go into Combo Jenny. So... The beauty for Combo Jenny is in the machinery of the game. Uh, Warcry is interesting for this because most combos are either very good and therefore like really known around the community, or they're pretty disappointing. Luckily, finding new ones and finding other ways to make them work is the job for Combo Jenny, and we need Combo Jenny to kind of show people what's possible. Um, another thing about Combo Jenny, though, is that they love combos. So yes, they're constantly searching for new ones, but if you're... If what you love is the interaction between game pieces, you're going to keep loving the combo even after it becomes meta. So something like a Brugit or a KO fight for profit situation, just because those have become meta, like a lot of people like crazy combos. A lot of people like seeing new things, right? Like Diversity to me especially loves seeing a new list do well at a, temp at a uh, tournament. Combo Jenny is like, I love this combo. Just because it's meta doesn't mean I don't stop loving it, and so I might just keep playing it. And I say that just because some of the best factions in the game are Krajan Overlords, which is a combo faction, or Destruction Soup, which is a combo faction. And so if what you love is combos, don't feel embarrassed that you're playing those factions because that's what you love. Two maybe off the beaten path crazy combos one is War Chanter plus all Ard Boys. This is a really fun little Iron Jaws list that I've tried a few times. I'm not going to put the list here because it's just a War Chanter and a bunch of Ard Boys. Um, another one is, now this recently came in second place in a fairly good sized Hungarian tournament. It's Slaves to Darkness with some crazy cool buff situation. Uh, you get a 190 for a mighty Dark Oath War Queen, a Fortituded Ogroid Myrmidon, a swift Fomoroid Crusher, three Marauders with Flail, and a Marauder with Shield. A ton of thought went into this list. It is a beautiful Johnny list, and it won second place. Didn't lose a game. There's so much going on here. So the War Queen's plus one attack buff, it affects herself, which is nice for the mighty divine blessing which gives her plus one strength which means that her own ability for herself is being more impactful but then her ability is on an aura six inch aura which is pretty good or is it the three inch one either way it affects an aura so it affects other fighters which means that the myrmidon and the crusher are perfect with her because they don't have a lot of attacks but four eight on those attacks i mean it's crazy and so the fomeroid crusher with that huge base can often have a tough time moving around so you give it swift so that it has an easier time moving then fortitude on the myrmidon to make it almost unkillable just an incredible layer of overlapping buffs on really important pieces. Um, just incredible Johnnying by this player, um, Michael K. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed by the job here. Um, this is, I think, my favorite list that I've seen since the last meta video I did. Um, this is just so cool. Uh, an alternate purchase that's really perfect for Combo Jenny is the Gabapalooza. This is a, a cheaper purchase um, because this Slaves to Darkness buffs thing, I mean, you probably want to get the Hagrax's pit, 
people um and then you know some marauders and then a war queen is 35 dollars. it's pretty expensive to put together but for a little bit cheaper you can get the gabapalooza they go into any destruction warband they're excellent the bogalai and the brugit are very meta but the other three all have really cool abilities too and the scaremonger i think it is has a really cool debuff that people generally don't play with but it is pretty powerful so try it out um the gabapalooza is really perfect if you're a combo player Next, we get into the puzzle solver, which is offbeat Johnny, looking for different challenges, things that you tell them um, are kind of odd or weird, and they just want to solve those puzzles. So things like all mid-range or, um, you know, like someone's like, man, I hate spam. Offbeat Johnny goes, I wonder if there's a faction that can not spam at all, no repeats. Um, you go like... Hey, you really need to have, you know, seven to ten fighters in your warband. Offbeat Johnny goes, yeah, but what if you had five? Or what if you had 15? Um, the sky's the limit. You know, only hats I put here. Um, they're just looking to answer, like, the craziest challenges they can think of. So one that I think is really perfect is I've talked a few times about, like, it's really hard to make mid-range warbands work. Um, here is a list of a Myrmidish Pain Master, a Shard Speaker, a Slangor Feed Blood, a Pain Bringer, a Twin Soul with Cleaver, a Twin Soul with Blades, a Twin Soul with Lash, and a Bliss Barb Archer. There isn't a single repeat here. There isn't a single Chaff model. There isn't a single Elite model. It is just like the most mid-range meltdown. Um, I'm really proud of this one. I don't think it would be like really good, but I don't think it would be bad because you're running like all of these fighters except for the Bliss Barb Archer, are pretty good. And then the Shard Speaker has a pretty interesting ability to kind of mitigate some of the mid-range problems with mid-range fighters dying too quickly. Well, now you're giving minus one attack. Um, there's a lot to play around with here. So uh, I think Slanesh is a really good place to look if you're kind of in this offbeat Johnny situation. Also, offbeat Johnny loves maybe some of the less played factions where this qualifies. So this is a fun little one. This one is a little on the expensive side because you kind of have to get a lot of different uh, pieces, but the Slanesh Vanguard box gets you most of this, though that is 140. Um, it might be cheaper to, say, grab the Armor box, which is just 60. I call the Armor box because it's the one that has both Pain Bringers and Twin Souls in it. And you can build most of this with just that. And then there's these just three single fighters where, you know, if you're being real, you could just do other things with it. But if you want to get real crazy, like offbeat Johnny would, you'd have to, you know, maybe get some proxies online, something like that. Um, though I will say, for most offbeat Johnnies, once you get into a challenge, you know that money is not going to be an object to stopping you from solving that challenge. So, um, you know, weird, odd lists are just part of the game there. Now let's get into, you know, the artiste. Um, whereas offbeat Johnny often ends up in a theme because that's how you're solving a certain weird challenge. List artist Johnny doesn't start with the challenge. They start with the theme, if that makes sense, right? The list itself is the justification. And list artist Johnny loves a crazy theme, loves a unique play style, just wants to like get that out there. They want to kind of express their identity through their warband composition. Now, a lot of lists... A lot of things for list artist Johnny are often just going to be like, hey, this fighter is neat and this fighter is neat. And this one I did in a narrative one time and it has a name and I'm not going to play any lists anymore that don't have this fighter in them. Stuff like that. And that's totally sweet and totally cool. Um, I can't advise you on how to spend your Christmas money if that's how you're feeling. So I thought I'd do a different sort of list artist thing, which is something that my buddy, JJ, I love this guy. I, uh, I'll know if he wa still watches based on whether I get a comment here. I'm watching you, JJ. Um, Oops All Nets is an incredible list he came up with. Uh, he runs it slightly differently than this, but this is my take on how I would run it. A blissful one, a True Blood, a Mind Stealer, Spheranx, three Awakened Ones, and an Ascended One. The Unmade are perfect for this because every, the whole thing, their shtick in the Unmade is that all of their fighters have a net. And so 
you just you run all of the nets and then you have two allies who also have nets and it's beautiful and it's the perfect kind of crazy play style crazy thing to kind of put on the board it has like a wild effect on the games it plays it's it's really fun it's really cool and um it's absolutely worth doing you know the unmade it's just one box and then you just have these two allies the true blood can be um you can do proxies really easily on ebay and then you can basically only do or sorry not on ebay on um Etsy, and then you can just basically just do the Mind Stealer Spherinx and the Unmade and have this list. Um, so it's not cheap, but it's not expensive either. It's cheaper than a Vanguard box. The ultimate magician is Uber Jenny. Watch me do the impossible. Usually to do that, you have to like innovate like crazy. You have to create something that the other people never thought possible. To me, the epitome of this is finding a way to make the most maligned factions in Warcry work. We're talking Nighthaunt. We're talking Cypher Lords. We're talking Zinch Demons. And a buddy of mine recently went to a tournament. It's really funny. Narrative. <laughs> this was at the Renegade Open. First day. Narrative. Um, can't play in the first round because they were playing Adeptus Titanicus. <laughs> Love you, you crazy bastard. Um, played Adeptus Titanicus. Missed the first round. Played the second round, won both their games, but because of Swiss pairings, you know, it's like they weren't necessarily winning against the people who were in the winning brackets. Um, then in the competitive was the TO, played in the first round because someone was late, won their first round, and then pulled out of the tournament. So over Renegade Open, they were 3-0 and with this list, even though uh, who knows what that means. But very impressive the ultimate sort of holy grail of Uber Jenny is to pull stuff off like that. Basically using Ephilim uh, along with the rest of the crew, Spawn Maw, Apatrax, Kindle Fingers, then having a Flamer of Zinch, a Pink Horror with Spiteful so that you guarantee to get the reaction when it dies, and then a Fomeroid Crusher because let's be honest, you need a Fomeroid Crusher to make bad Chaos Warbands work. But this is like such a cool um, way to do the Uber Jenny thing of sort of winning with the impossible faction. I just want to put out a warning for people. Many people think they're Uber Jennies, but aren't ready for that life. Either way, Ephilim's Freaky People is one of the best Johnny purchases in general for Warcry. And I suggest people who love like weird stuff happening. I really suggest you get this Underworld's Warband. They are excellent. Um, the, not only in terms of they're decent in-game, and they are crazy in-game. It's everything Zinch is supposed to be. Let's get into Spike. Spike is the one to, who plays to prove something. Now, usually that's to prove I'm better than you. But not always. Um, one of the Spikes that uh, I know a few of is Sleeper Spike. It's like to prove that... People aren't respecting such and such archetype, something like that. You can be trying to prove any given different thing, but most spikes who play games are trying to prove that they are good. The way you want to prove or like what you're trying to prove can be different enough that there are a lot of different types of spikes. One is innovator spike, who prides themselves on always finding the next broken thing. Um, then there's budget spike, who wants to beat you with spending a quarter of the money that you did. Uh, then there's tuner spike who wants to perfect the established archetypes. Analyst Spike, who wants to have kind of the perfect setup for the exact day that they're playing. And then there's Nuts and Bolts Spike, who just wants to prove that they are the best in-game player that there is. Let's talk about Innovator Spike, who's really trying to tell the future. The idea here is net lists are gross. And normally Spike is like, all about the really caring about net lists because it's like trying to win to prove that you're really good. Innovator Spike though really hates net lists like and is often the person at the tournament. People think this is Timmy behavior. Some types of Timmies yes, but most Timmies no. The person at the tournament who like you bring a really strong list and then that person like side eyes you and says something kind of mean, that's usually Innovator Spike um, because. The real way to prove you're better is by winning with stuff that your opponents didn't even know was good yet. I mean, there's an argument there, right? So if that's you, 
There's no shame in that. You just want to be 10 steps ahead of people, and that's cool. Um, I think the best faction for that. Now, I'm not going to give a list here because if you're truly innovator, Spike, you don't care what I think. But Cities of Sigmar are priced to move. They've clearly shown that they want to try to make move for the new move three. And so the way steel helms are priced, the way the command corpse box is priced is just like hyper competitive. There's a few abilities that are pretty interesting as far as castellite formation, rousing speech, uh, the castellite wall reaction. Pretty strong. I think you need at least one ally to make it work. It's a really interesting puzzle because you have so many different powerful chaff pieces, but nobody knows quite yet. Um, basically, painting meta means that we haven't really seen these on the table yet. No one knows quite yet like exactly what balance of which pieces you need, but this is, I think, the next A-tier faction in Warcry is the new Cities of Sigmar Castellite people. And if you are an innovator spike, this is the faction that you should really try to concentrate on because I think they are the next big thing. This is also very much the subtype of spikes who don't know their spikes. Um, most of those spikes are innovator spikes. Uh, also, sleeper spike is someone who I know a few sleeper spikes. It's a subtype of this where it's like the Johnny version is you say this can't be done, so I want to try to do it. Sleeper spike is maybe less out there than Uber Johnny, <laughs> but is like, you say this isn't good. I think it's good. I need to prove that you're sleeping on this. So going three and one with a disrespected faction proves more than winning the tournament does in the mind of Sleeper Spike. Like if I were Sleeper Spike, I would be trying to break Corn Bloodbound right now because that is a faction that is doing really poorly in win rate overall, but seems like it has a lot of tools. So you should be able to go three and one in a tournament with Corn Bloodbound. And so that's where I would kind of be focusing my energy if I, is if I were trying to, you know, be proving that people are sleeping on a faction. That's the one I would go for. Um, by the way, their Vanguard box is like really perfect. It has all the options for them um, or like most of the options for them. So go with their Vanguard box or if you can get the old start collecting with the Korgarath in it, that's the best purchase. And it's only like $90. So if you can find that, that's the perfect sleeper spike um, thing to grab. Now we got budget spike. This is where you get a certain satisfaction if you have a one box warband and you beat someone who's got like total soup with a bunch of allies that clearly would cost a ton to put together. If you've ever described a game as pay to win, you might be a budget spike. Uh, the best, I'm not going to give you a list here because, you know, you have to do it yourself. That's the spike thing. But I will say the best one box warbands in the game if you have a budget spike in your life, or if you feel a little budget spike energy, but you don't know where to start, here are the five. Get one of these five. Ogre Gluttons, the Dominion, basically the Stormcast half is the better half, but Cruel Boy's half is also really solid um, of Dominion. Both are really cheap on eBay. Iron Golems, actually, generally disrespected. They have a high win rate but have never won a tournament in since the last FAQ which I find really interesting. Um, a lot of people go like two and two or three and one with iron golems. And then cruel boys monster killers actually. One box of cruel boys monster killers is like shockingly functional um, and really good. So I would say those are the five things that you should be kind of focusing on. But Ogre Gluttons, I do think, maybe stand head and shoulders above everyone else. Uh, that box is insane if you love winning and you don't want to spend money. Now let's get to Tuner Spike. The idea here is you want to, you care about finding the very best version of the best thing. You are looking for the absolute pinnacle of the game. Basically, the way it proves the most than anything else to you, if you're a tuner spike, is if you win a tournament with X, and then I go and I improve your list, I make it better, and then I win with it too, 
I haven't just beaten my opponents. I've beaten you too. I think that that's kind of an interesting way to think about it. It's not my own personal philosophy, but I do find it fascinating. And usually when a format gets broken and a form and something has to be banned, it's usually because at the end of the day, Tuner Spike beat Innovator Spike. And uh, no one likes being in a place where that has happened, but it is Tuner Spike's job to get us there. Um, and I think that that's really interesting. So what I would say is the perfect KO SBG and Nurgle lists are still out there, or at least Nurgle non-Chimera. We know Nurgle Chimera, but also it can be beaten. If you metagame specifically for Nurgle Chimera, you'll beat it. The perfect versions of these three factions are still out there. This is These are the three factions I'd be looking to if I was trying to find like what is the pinnacle of the game. And what I will say is that Soul Blight Grave Lords is perfect for this because their Vanguard has everything that you want right now. Ever since the January FAQ, I think that Skeletons have edged just ever so slightly past Grave Guard as far as the best option in Soul Blight. Grave Guard are still great. Maybe the ideal list wants a mix of both, um, but the Vanguard has your Vargoyle, it has your Vampire Lord, it's got all the skeletons. It's really the perfect box. Now it is expensive, but it's just got so many things in it, right? So I would say that's an incredible place to start if you feel like you are kind of a spiky person who wants to find like what is the platonic ideal of power gaming in Warcry. I really think it is going into one of these three factions and trying to find the very best version of it. Now let's talk about Analyst Spike. Analyst Spike, I, I kind of really like. I am not this guy, but I really like hearing various Analyst Spikes and what they post online. Shouts to overthinkingwarcry.com. Basically, the idea here is anyone can like practice a bunch and get good or netlist and have a good warband, but having the perfect configuration for the exact scenarios and specific opponents I'm going to face, that is the ultimate reward where you have essentially like laid this trap for their opponent where you know all their moves ahead of time and everything they could possibly do you've already accounted for. I mean, that is the like, that is the reward for Analyst Spike. Um, I've got, you know, one of the silliest characters and one of the silliest animes, Kill a Kill. Uh, shouts if you uh, like if you like Kill a Kill. Um, but this type of spike might get really in-depth about what each specific mission in a pack favors. Or might go really into, like, the top players they expect to see at an event. And, like, what are those players' tendencies and trying to plan their warband based on their specific opponent, something like that. So again, you don't care if you're this person what my specific list is going to be because you're going to tune it for your specific game. But some great purchases if this your is your type of gaming. Uh, Revenants, because the Revenant leader is an alliable teleporter that can, in certain packs... You can win a game with like a pile of garbage and this teleporter, depending on the mission. Um, also, a dispossessed warden king can basically just point at an objective and win it. And that is a very interesting place to be if you're Analyst Spike. Um, Brute Boss does the exact same thing, but in destruction. There's also some interesting purchases for if it's less about a specific mission and more about a specific meta. Things like Hrothgorn's Man Trappers or Hexbane's Hunters or the Aspiring Champion who is the leader of the Chaos Warrior box. Chaos Warriors suck, but their, their leader is really, really good and very good in specific setups and metagames. These are some pieces that are really, really interesting if, to you if you are Analyst Spike as far as ways to win very specific tournaments and very specific metagames and setups. Um, things that you should really think about if uh, if what you want is to kind of change up your list based on what the TO says is coming up. Um, I would say all six of these are really incredible purchases and great places to spend your Christmas money. Finally, let's get into Nuts and Bolts Spike. This is the one who is less worried about the list, really, because what you want is to outplay your opponent 
in the game, right? Because your idea is, who cares about lists? Anyone can just like look up a list online. You haven't proven anything by just like beating me in list building. We want to know who is the best at moving the people around the table. Again, this is something that I like wholeheartedly disagree with as a philosophy, but I find it really interesting and I can't say it's invalid. Like it's an absolutely valid way to play and way to like prove that you're the best. And I think we have the perfect archetype for it. Horns of a Shoot are good for this too. I just want to put that out there. But Destruction Soup is the ultimate nuts and bolts spike archetype. Um, the reason being... You have all of these tools at your disposal. You have your brew git, you have nets, you have big titans. You can often have a few chaff models depending on the faction you've chosen, right? So you have play in every type of game, but you really get punished for mistakes with Destruction Soup. I've definitely, I've had a couple experiences now where I've played against someone who was on Destruction Soup where I thought I was going to lose, and then I won because they made a mistake. And it wasn't because, in my opinion, it's not because of anything I did. It's really because my opponent, like, just placed something, like, an inch too far to the left, or, like, you know, and it's not, like, engaging or not engaging this round, um, but it's, like, being ready to cover a certain area next round or the round after that, and they kind of didn't do it right, and I ended up winning because of that. Um, Destruction Soup can really, really punish. Like, if you make two mistakes, that is often going to lose you the game. The second mistake that you make with this in a game is usually going to lose it for you. But if you play perfectly, you'll beat anything. And sometimes, like, opponents on really strong other warbands will feel like they never had a chance. So I would say these types of lists are the ultimate, like, skill expression lists. And... Here is a version. Uh, Manok de Cunin is a sort of, I'm trying to consolidate purchases a little bit here, but Manok de Cunin, three Gut Rippers, Shank, a Brugit, a Trogoth, and a Gut Lord is, I think, a really strong way to play Destruction Soup. There's a lot of best ways to play Destruction Soup. The point is to have the best sort of in-game play and this is something that will be really powerful for you in any kind of you know situation where you play really well you've got a net you've got the brew get able to do a ton of damage you've got the cruel boys reaction allowing you to set up situations where mana can get free attacks um a lot is going on here also you have the synergy between the brew get and Venom encrusted weapons. So the Brugit gives more attacks. Venom encrusted weapons makes each attack do more damage. So the two actually like combo geometrically. So each one makes the other better. Um, there's a lot going on in Destruction Soup with Cruel Boys that I think is really, really powerful. You can absolutely win tournaments with this list, but you will have to play really well. And that is what Nuts and Bolts Spike is looking for. So I would say Destruction Soup, if if what you really care about is sort of showing how good you can play, proving to yourself that you can play a perfect game of Warcry, the faction that is going to sort of give you the most and ask the most of you is going to be uh, Destruction Soup, probably with Cruel Boys, but honestly, any Destruction faction can do it um, because of how the Gobblepalooza work, and how Trogoths work. Um, you can really do a lot there. That's everything. That's all of the Timmy, Johnny, and Spike subtypes that uh, that I could think of. Um, the reason I wanted to do this and do it by subtype was because I just, I find on the internet a lot of people talk about Timmy and Johnny Spike as stereotypes, like Johnny just likes combos, and Timmy just likes big things, and Spike just likes winning, and that's not really how they work. Um, they really work, you know, people are complicated, and so there's complicated versions of Timmy, and there's complicated versions of Johnny, and there's complicated versions of Spike, and so I wanted to kind of get that out there because I feel like not enough people, a lot of people, especially in the war, Warhammer space, a lot of Warhammer content creators who will go un named uh will use these terms 
fast and loose and not correctly. So I just wanted to show the actual correct usages of these words and uh, also maybe have fun and give you some advice on some things that you can uh, get into in the new year when you uh, decide for a new painting project. Um, I hope you had fun with this and I'll be back with more Warcry videos in the future. May all your rolls be crits.